Coming into this penitentiary, we were met with iron bars, the click of keys, and that's it, and walls. It's really sterile. And once you encounter going to the big blocks, the housing units, you are met with more bars, noises, just solid concrete. And there's no nature, nothing that would help kind of calm or nothing soothing or calming about it. The Veterans Memorial had just been completed in 2014, and the superintendent reached out to the leadership and said, I'm open to some other ideas for further beautifying the, the prison spaces. Uh, does anyone have any ideas? So I raised my hand and uh, for the first time got to speak in a president's meeting, and I said to the superintendent, um, how about a koi pond? And he said, uh, well, I'd be willing to look at a proposal, put something together and show it to me. So that was in uh, 2014, and the idea was born. Originally of one, how, how are we going to do it safely and securely? Um, how are the staff going to react? And you know, in some ways you gotta worry about what's the general public going to say of, you know, here we are putting healing gardens inside of our prisons. Um, and you know, but what, what if we did do it? Well, you know, what, what would that say about, you know, where we're going and where we're heading? And, you know, maybe this could be the, you know, precipitate change. One of the discussions we had to have was who was going to fund the project. Um, so we told the Asian Pacific Club that no state funds could go towards that. It would have to be funds raised by the club and paid for by the club, meaning every, every tool, every piece of fencing, every plant, everything had to be fully funded by the Asian Pacific Club. And they clearly understood that, uh, gave us a plan of how they were going to raise the funds. Um, we were actually pretty shocked at some of the ideas they had and, you know, we're already starting to take um, classes and trying to learn how to write proposals and grants and so we were, they had a very well thought out plan in their head and uh, were able to articulate it very well so gave them permission okay if you think you could fund this if you think you could bring this you know to fruition bring us back a final proposal that, and we'll review it and see what we can do. Our staff advisor suggested that we create something that's visible and uh, physical. We definitely have to come, come up with ideas that are really, really basic. So a lot of it was made out of cardboard, rolled up. Um, we have an art department where I use some of the paints to paint the lattice, rocks, use stones, um, cardboards, and use green uh, copy papers. Just things, just really basic stuff. And that really, I think, inspired Hoichi Karisu, the designer, when we first met him. It definitely brought a smile to his face, just to see the simplicity of our dreams and hope. When HK came and explained to us the uh, meaning behind the healing garden, you know, and, and educated the administrative team on what a healing garden means and what, how it could help in the healing process and the self-reflection and change within an individual, um, that's what we envision this doing, is giving people the opportunity to reflect on their past. Um, you know, a lot of the people in our care and custody are good people who have made very poor choices in life. Um, you know, and this will give them the opportunity to reflect back on what could they have done differently, um, how could they have made better choices, and how can they move ahead. The first couple of years when we started talking about the koi pond and the garden, to uh, people within the prison population, 
um, since most of them are, are used to being told no and, ha and going without and having very little, um, there was uh, a lot of skepticism. And so uh, there wasn't very much support other than, oh, that'd be cool. What a cool idea. Um, but there was very little volunteerism at that point. But what we discovered as, uh, as we started to put drawings up around the institution and they saw us meeting with people from the community, they started to believe that it was actually possible, that it might actually happen. And so what started to happen was people were coming up to us on a daily basis saying, how can I help? I really want this to happen. Oh, this is going to be so amazing. I was here 30 years ago when we had trees and they cut them all down. Oh, what it, how nice it would be to have trees back again someday. Is there any way I can help? You see this arrangement, different garden, they are much easier and naturally accept how humble way to nature teach you. Be yourself, be good, encouraging, or still I have a hope. I think it helps one that it's there. This is the first of its kind in our, you know, Oregon prisons. You know, do some pretty manual labor. They moved those rocks and they planted those trees. And um, I mean, what an experience it was to see that come together for them. Um, and also to know that they were a part of changing the world. I mean, we're, I feel like here at the penitentiary, we're changing the world one interaction at a time. There are certain factors in that garden that, you know, five years ago wouldn't have been possible. Not only the trees were put back, but this garden with a pool. I mean, it's just phenomenal. And fish and, you know, tall trees and bamboo. And To see the first individual, you know, uh, when they put the trees in, there was a adult in custody and he's sitting under a tree eating his sack of lunch on a break from work. And, and, uh, tears in his eyes and the staff you know first uh, one of the, the assist superintendent stops are you okay he says yeah he says well why are you crying he says I haven't sat beneath a tree and ate a sandwich in over 20 years you know and then when he came up and shared that with all of us it, it, it was a moment for the administrative team to self-reflect of could you imagine not ever sitting underneath a tree for 20 years eating a sandwich and then it started making us all think of you know if uh, all of our vacations, we all talked about, hey, what do you do on vacation? Oh, I like to hike. And, you know, myself, I like to go to the beach. And we all said, every one of us described an event that happened in nature and our appreciation of nature and beauty. Can you imagine going through life for 20, 30 years not having that and what it means? It's definitely a transitioning not only amongst the adults in custody, but the staff as well. How we're starting to be more pro-social, how we're starting to work together, not against each other. And now we're standing beyond anything we could have ever imagined that a healing garden could be.